and campaign could be smoking gun on Russia. Investigators digging into Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting with a Russian lawyer are uncovering unsettling connections between Russia and Hillary Clinton. One of John Podesta's leaked emails is considered in a new light after Donald Trump Jr. met with Russian lawyer Natalia Vazelnitskaya. The email indicates that Hillary Clinton was working for the Russian government, via Bart. Trump Jr. admits that the meeting with Vazelnitskaya was a mistake. The lawyer lied about having dirt on Clinton to get close to the Trump campaign to lobby against the Magnitsky Act. But an email captured from Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, John Podesta, reveals that Clinton and this lawyer shared the same goals. Clinton leads the opposition against the Magnitsky Act in America. Clinton's opposition to the act began after she was paid by the Russians. We kill the Bloomberg story trying to link HRC's, Hillary's, opposition to the Magnitsky bill to a $500,000 speech that WJC, Bill, gave in Moscow, wrote a Clinton staffer in a private email. Vladimir Putin strongly opposed the Magnitsky Act a bipartisan bill passed by Congress in response to the murder of a Russian whistleblower, allegedly at the hands of the Russian government. The act targeted leading members of the Russian government and blocked their entry into the United States. The act also allowed our government to seize Russian assets held in America. Vladimir Putin was angered by the Magnitsky Act and responded by passing a law that blocked Americans from adopting Russian children. However, it appears that Putin also hired then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to oppose the legislation. Hillary Clinton started publicly opposing the act after Bill Clinton gave a short speech in Moscow for $500,000. The fee was paid for by a Russian investment bank with ties to the Kremlin. The Clintons were already working with the Russian government around the time the act was moving through Congress. Hillary Clinton was working to enable the Russian government to acquire Canadian mining company, Uranium One. The sale of the company needed to be approved by the Clinton State Department and the Obama administration since uranium is a strategic resource. The deal went through, and the Russian government obtained control of 20% of America's uranium production capacity. Nine of the shareholders of Uranium One happened to donate a combined $145 million to the Clinton Foundation before the deal was approved by the Clinton State Department. Clearly, Clinton not Trump was in league with Russia. Massive news trail leads to Obama and Donald Trump, Jr. Lawyer Gate. In the media's desperate attempt to find some way to connect President Trump to Russia, in hopes of demonstrating the two colluded to keep Hillary Clinton out of the White House, their latest focus is on a meeting Trump Jr. had with a Russian attorney. As it turns out, the very reason this attorney was able to come to the United States had a whole lot to do with liberal darling, and former president, Barack Obama. According to Fox News, the Russian attorney whose campaign season meeting with Donald Trump Jr. has caused headaches for the White House was cleared to enter the U.S. at the time of the visit by the Obama State Department, officials confirmed to Fox News late Thursday. A brief timeline released overnight helps to resolve questions over how Natalia Veselnitskaya even had legal permission to be in the U.S. and it also shows multiple Obama agencies were involved on multiple occasions in granting access to the lawyer after she was initially denied a visa. Her unusual entry into the U.S. has sparked a furious round of finger-pointing among federal agencies, and the buck appears to stop at the State Department, with assistance from both Dodge and DHS. According to the timeline released by the Department of Homeland Security, the Obama Justice and Homeland Security Departments granted her a special type of parole to be in the U.S. from September 2015 through February 2016 to work on a court case in New York. After that expired, according to DHS, the State Department issued her a B-1-B-2 non-immigrant visa in June 2016, according to DHS. Just in time for her meeting with Trump Jr., Trump's son in law Jared Kushner, and then campaign chairman Paul Manafort. Ms. Vazelnitskaya was subsequently paroled into the U.S. several times between 2015 and 2016, ending in February 2016. In June 2016, she was issued a B 1 B 2 non immigrant visa by the U.S. Department of State, a DHS spokesperson told Fox News Thursday night. 
Veselnitskaya was given a significant public benefit parole document in the fall of 2015 that officially expired in January of 2016. Though she filed for an extension, according to the DHS, she was denied by the Southern District New York Attorney's Office. President Trump, speaking at a joint press conference with French President Emmanuel Macron Thursday, said he heard Veselnitskaya was approved by Attorney General Lynch. The one thing we know for sure is that the media hates the president, and will do just about anything to sabotage his administration, and that includes the ongoing narrative involving Russia. Justin Mann linked to Hillary investigation found dead, what's your response? One of the most ominous memes about the Clinton family is the propensity of people close to them winding up dead. Unfortunately. This meme always seems to turn into reality. 81-year-old Peter W. Smith, a longtime Republican activist, was recently found dead in a Minnesota hotel room. His suicide note claimed that his death was the result of an expiring $5 million life insurance policy and ill health. However, Smith had just recently testified that he was involved in finding Hillary Clinton's hacked emails, via IJR. Smith told his confession to the Wall Street Journal just days before his suicide. Mr. Smith apparently believed that Clinton's emails had been acquired by Russian hackers. His role, he claimed, was to track down these emails, via Chicago Tribune. Many on the Internet are not buying this explanation, especially since news outlets have uncovered the fact that the Russian lawyer at the heart of the scandal involving Donald Trump. Jr. is a longtime Democrat operative, via Independent. Also furthering suspicions is the long history of dead bodies piling up around the Clintons. In 1993, Vince Foster, a deputy White House counsel during the Clinton administration, committed suicide. The official theory is that Foster killed himself due to fears of false accusations. Others claim that the Clintons had Foster killed because he knew too much about the Whitewater scandal via Washington Post. Whitewater suspect James McDougall died of a suspicious heart attack in 1998 during the height of the Monica Lewinsky scandal, via New York Times. In 1992, Victor Razor, the chief financial aide to Bill Clinton's presidential campaign, died in a strange airplane crash with his son, via New York Times. More recently, in 2016, Corrupt UN leader John Ash died in a very bizarre weightlifting accident before he could give potentially damaging testimony involving the Clinton Foundation, via The Guardian. Of course, many still maintain that DNC staffer and Bernie Sanders supporter Seth Rich was murdered by Clinton associates because he leaked the DNC emails to WikiLeaks. All of these deaths could be coincidental. However, by viewing them all together, it is beyond eyebrow-raising that so many people with corrupt connections to the Clintons have a habit of dying young or in bizarre circumstances. Mr. Smith could be just another victim of depression and ill health. Or, conversely, he could be another corpse linked to the Clinton crime family of Arkansas and Washington, D.C. IT's Happening Trump met with the powerful in Paris but his most important meeting was with old American heroes. Donald and Melania Trump visited Paris this week. The first family was welcomed with full state honors by the French government, complete with a red carpet, military parade, and full review. Trump and his team conducted wide-ranging meetings with top French political and military officials, assembled by new French President Emmanuel Macron. Melania continued her tradition of visiting children's hospitals abroad and paid a visit to the sick children of Necker Hospital, where she even spoke French to some of the children. Melania and the First Lady of France toured the Notre Dame Cathedral and took a boat tour of the Seine River. The first families of France and America visited the tomb of Napoleon, dined at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and were present at a Bastille Day celebration in the heart of Paris Friday morning. However, the most important and arguably most powerful moment of the entire trip revolved around a little covered speech that Donald Trump gave to the staff of the U.S. Embassy in France. Gathered at the embassy were families of embassy workers and 200 American military personnel stationed there. 
there were also three guests of honor in the crowd who deserved and received a true hero's welcome. Mr. Donald Cobb, USS Murphy, Mr. Stephen Melnikoff, 29th Infantry, and Mr. Joseph Riley, 101st Airborne, had all served to liberate France on D-Day, storming the Nazi-held beaches of Normandy over 70 years ago. The three American heroes were still able to stand and be recognized when President Trump said of them, these are real heroes. These courageous men helped to liberate this continent and win the war. After his remarks, the President and the First Lady went down into the crowd and shook the hands of the World War II veterans, thanking them for their service. Cobb, Riley, and Melnikoff also took photos with the military staff of the embassy afterward. Were it not for men like this, France as we know it may not exist today. The greatest generation, now landing in France not to gunshot and flak cannons, but to a hero's welcome from a grateful Finally, Jesse Waters stands up for the Trump family in this epic rant. Jesse Waters is fed up with the media attacking and calling President Trump's family unpatriotic. Waters points out the past administrations, along with their families, and all the unpatriotic acts they've done. The Clintons and Obamas have been mimicking and cozying up to communist dictators for years. He makes the best case yet for Trump and his family and points out that they've done more for this country than any Democrat elected official. On Thursday night, Jesse Waters took a moment to share his frustrations with the left's constant attacks on the Trump family. I'm very sick of the left calling the Trump family unpatriotic, he began. They're now the McCarthyites. The Fox News host accused Democrats of trying to mimic communism and cozying up to dictators and enemies for years. He then took shots at President Obama for palling around with domestic terrorists like Bill Ayers and the media for colluding with Democrats. He also claimed that they undermined the military. He continued his fiery rant, Donald Trump's family has done more for this country than any Democratic elected official. He has provided more jobs in the real estate industry, in the fashion industry, in the hotel and casino industry, he has created more wealth for anybody in this entire country. So to smear them as mafia or unpatriotic is absolutely shameful and I think everybody needs to wake up and realize this family is a patriotic family and what's happening right now is a coup against the wealthy American people. Meghan McCain believes that the left is ruining themselves for using terms like treason towards the Trumps. No family gives up the things you have to give up in order to become president and run for president if you don't have a deep love and affinity for this country. They are total patriots, she said. She added that the left is gonna kill themselves because saying things like they're not patriots and they don't love America ultimately help the Trumps. What do you think about this comment below?